We are live at Clem Richardson Stadium for our second top 10 matchup this season. Dothan High is ranked number seven and features two of the state's top rushers, while Baker is ranked number nine and off to their best start in 50 years behind the talent of two Power Five commits. Could we be in store for a possible playoff preview? We're about to find out now for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Good evening, I'm Al Wheaton, joined by Corey LeBounty, and we're glad you're with us. Corey, it's an out-of-region week across the state, but we've landed our second top 10 matchup this season. Well, what you're looking at is what you exactly talked about, that 7A playoff implications here in a non-region game, meaning 7A Region 1 versus 7A Region 2. So it's a clash of the two regions, which will give us a playoff preview. And I know this is one that these two opponents are familiar with, having played one another one year ago. So we're looking for an outstanding contest tonight. Not only have they played each other one year ago, Dothan came down to Foley as the number four seed and knocked off the Lions last year in the playoffs. So they're quite familiar with this area. And think about this, Foley's head coach, Derek Scott, his brother, Eric Scott, is the defensive coordinator for Baker. It never hurts where you can have a family affair in regards to knowledge being shared. And it's going to be a tremendous advantage having your brother playing against the same offensive type weapons that we're going to see here tonight. All right, Corey, let's get into your checklist, and we're going to find out what these teams need to do to get the win tonight. Well, for Baker, it's going to be as simple as stopping the run. We're going to see run, run, and run some more by the Dolphin Wolves tonight. Penalty poise is going to be very important for Baker also. They're going to have to eliminate that, which are drive killers. Sustaining drives, Al, is also going to be essential to Joshua Flowers and Chase Calcagni, who is the offensive coordinator for the Baker Hornets. On the flip side, when we look at Dothan High School, they definitely want to rev up the running game because they have two backs that have combined for almost 1,000 total yards of offense. Contain and pressure the pocket. Joshua Flowers, he's a dual threat quarterback, and if you let him pick you apart, he will. He can also beat you with his feet and limit the amount of turnovers that you have. That's going to be critical for Dothan to come away with the win out here in West Mobile as well. It is going to be quite critical. It is a great night tonight for football. I mean, fall came in last week. We got a little of that heat out of there, and Corey is feeling great. So let's Good, take it down to the sidelines. Check in with Kimberly Dunn for our BSN weather forecast. Hey guys, as we are mid mid season here for football season, we have another great night as far as weather for the players. And both of these teams are excited and ready for the competition. We will be starting tonight out at 81 degrees for kickoff, and it's just going to continue to get dropped from there and go into the 70s. Humidity will continue to go up starting at 52% and going all the way up to 72, but there's only a 1% chance of rain, so we do not have to worry about that tonight. So these players have great playing conditions, and both of these teams are ready for the competition. Thank you, Kimberly. We're ready for the competition as well. As we said, number seven, Dothan High, against number nine, Baker. Corey, it's time to get down to the nuts and bolts of the ball game brought to you by Threaded Fasteners. Who are our impact players for tonight? Well, for the Baker Hornets, it's none other than their senior quarterback leader, Joshua Flowers. We just feel like it was a couple of moments ago that we saw Josh burst onto the scene versus Theodore, yeah. but now he's a senior Mississippi State verbal commit. Also, his receiver, Bryce Kane, in only his second year of football. He's a baseball star, but you'll see him next year on the plains of Auburn blazing 4-3 speed out of Bryce Kane for Dothan High School, their impact players. Kavian is definitely one of those dirty. He is the defensive back with four interceptions so far for the Dothan Wolves. And Tamarian Peterson, the senior running back. This young man has close to 600 rushing yards on the season. So you can look to get a heavy dose of number five, 
in for the Dalton Wolves. And number five, not by himself, Threaded Fasteners Impact Players, brought to you by Threaded Fasteners Solutions from the ground up since 1979. You know what? Peterson's not going to be by himself because they hit you with a one and a two. A.J. Alexander, he's a big player for the Dalton High Wolves as well as they ground and pound two of the state's top two rushers. As a matter of fact, Dothan High led the state in rushing last year for Class 7A, Corey. When we talked to Dothan's head coach, we talked about what is it going to take to win this football game. He's going to, he said, we do what we do, which is run the football. So it's going to be very important for Coach Scott's defense to make sure they recognize their keys and have great eye discipline because that's what it's going to take. Your linebackers on that second level, if those big 300-pound offensive linemen find a way to get to that second and third level, it's going to spell trouble for the the Hornets tonight. All right. Coming up, we also talk about our spotlight player about this time. But tonight, because this is a top 10 matchup, we're going to put up the 7A poll brought to you by the Alabama Sports Writers Association to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking like. We know last night Thompson lost to Clay Chalkville. We'll talk about that later on. That was a good ball game, Corey. But look at sitting at number four, Mary Montgomery right there uh, at 5-0. Dothan High, number seven in the state. Baker, number nine. Foley just outside the top ten receiving two votes. But, Corey, look at where we are with Dothan and Baker. Only one spot in between. And guess what, Corey? Enterprise, that's a seven. That's a 7A Region 2 team right there. So you're looking at powerhouses in both 7A Region right. 1 and 7A Region 2. And to get a top 10 7A matchup is something we're not used to this late in the season, especially one that comes from a different region, having a ranked opponent in 7A Region 1. Very special atmosphere being created tonight. It really is as the Baker Hornets run onto the field. We all want, also want to say welcome to everyone watching us up there in the Wiregrass. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, supporting your Dothan High Wolves, we appreciate it. And there's Dothan High running onto the field right now. Coach Jed Kennedy said, I can't call him Dothan if I want to. I won't get in trouble, Corey. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those situations, Al. We're going to see great 7A football between Dothan and Baker tonight. All right, don't move. The kickoff's headed your way for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's another top 10 matchup. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Hey, Alexa, tell me about Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career-ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? And we are underway as Baker's going to receive the kickoff, and that ball goes out of bounds, so that will be a legal procedure called against Dothan. See if we get to get the re-kick hit coming up in one second. Out of bounds, kicking team, ball replacing, 35-yard line, first down. So first and 10 coming up for the Hornets. They're led onto the field by quarterback Josh Flowers. He's a 71% passer, has over 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. He also leads the Hornets in rushing with eight scores. When passing, he'll target receivers Bryce Kane or K.J. Beckham. Kane averages 26.4 yards a catch with nine scores. Running back Rod Taylor will carry the rock. He's a beast with seven scores. Up front making holes, center Sawyer Colvin, left tackle Joe Robinson. The line is undersized at 232 pounds, but Baker has a plus two in the turnover ratio. First and 10 for the Hornets, and just like that, as I said, up the middle goes Josh Flowers for a nice nine or eight yard gain. 
Great design play right there. What you're trying to see, the Dothan defense, led by defensive coordinator Rich Bettesum and Pat Cerrone, they love to run this 3-4 defense, tried to disguise it to begin with. They went ahead and had three down linemen and rushed another two, but Josh Flowers had great numbers, picks up positive yardage on first down, second and two. Flowers throws, completes the pass. Bryce Kane into Dothan high territory. Let's take a look at that Dothan defense. The Wolves play a high potent 3-4 defense with linebacker Marquise Myers leading the team in tackles. Outside linebacker Zach Walker will patrol the edge as he has six tackles for loss in the secondary. Cornerback Kiavion Dury, one of our impact players, has four picks and two scores on the season as this Wolves defense has a total of seven non-offensive touchdowns. Up front defensive end Ezekiel Scott will anchor a line that averages 248 pounds. First and 10 for the Hornets at the 38. Flowers with the keeper. He's going to pick up a couple as he gets close to the 40-yard line. On the previous play, we saw Flowers go to his favorite connection, Bryce Kane. You have to respect the speed, the 4-3 blazing speed of Bryce Kane, so you're going to give him a soft cushion, which is allows him to run a little five-yard route. But Josh Flowers, he knows when to pull it. He knows when to throw it. He's a tremendous curator of this offense of Chase Calcagney and he and Calcagney have been working together now for three years together right. so they know each other's ins and outs second and eight now upcoming. Flowers tosses it to Rod Taylor. Taylor breaks past the 30 yard line closer to the red zone that's going to be another first down for the Baker Hornets. What you're seeing Rod Taylor do, the 5'11", 161-pound senior, has now 60 rushes for 530 yards. Great job by the offensive line up front, holding the way for a first down there for the Baker Hornets. Ball on the 26-yard line of the Wolves. Another handoff to Rod Taylor. He's got room. Up ended near the 15-yard line. The Hornets are into the red zone just like that. Well, now you must capitalize. Great job of blocking up front. Taylor hits the hole hard, and you look at the tackle that was made in the secondary. Dury comes up from his corner position, makes that tackle. Now you're inside the red zone area, somewhere that the Baker Hornets have to capitalize, Al. We saw them a year ago struggle right. in the red zone area with turnovers. They want to turn this into six points, especially because this may be an offensive shootout. Just a shot right there of the Hornet hooligans. They're ready to get excited behind this exciting Baker Hornets offense. Another keeper. Flowers tried to run behind Taylor as he was providing some blocking. They'll give him credit for about two. So it'll be second and eight coming up here for the Hornets. Nice little quarterback counter by Joshua Flowers. Every down, though, Baker has gotten positive yardage so far. No negative yards, no negative penalties here to negate down and distance. Makes it easy for Chase Calcagney's call sheet when he relays it in to Joshua Flowers. Hornets taking their time. Play clock approaching 10 seconds. And Baker's going to call the timeout. Coach Norman wants to talk about it early here in the ball game at 7.55. They're going to take a break. We'll take a quick 30-second break and come back, bringing more action. Baker driving early in this top 10 matchup. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. An early timeout call by the Hornets. 
Coach Steve Norman wants to make sure he has the right call, gets Chase Calcagney involved. Very important, Corey. We talked to him about this before the ball game, playing clean and mistake-free against an offense like this single wing that Dothan provides tonight. Well, you want to make sure right here coming out of this timeout, you survey the defense, you have Josh Flowers looking it over, going to make a great call right here, dual-threat quarterback. Jet sweep to K.J. Beckham, runs into one of his own blockers, and the Wolves are going to push him back toward the 15-yard line. Let's see if they call it no gain. Will they mark this? So, yeah, it looks like no gain on the play. Third down coming up here for Baker. Now, here's where the play sheet is shrunk because now if you're Dothan, you can go and try to pin your ears back to Josh Flowers. Cal Cagney, the offensive coordinator, not as many play calls that you can call in a goal line situation because now your weapons aren't as versatile as they are in the open field. You have to have yards after catch. Third and eight from the 13 for the Hornets. Play clock under five. Flowers throws. Pass incomplete intended for Bryce Kane. No flags on the play. It'll be fourth down coming up here for the Hornets. And it looks like they're going to send out Blaine Munson to attempt a field goal. And that's what I mean by your play sheet shrinking because when you're outside of the 20, you have much more room to operate from. And goal line situations, Baker's going to want to have six instead of three. They will settle for three right here. We'll see if they're able to put this long drive with three on the board. Munson is four of six on the season, setting up for a 30-yarder on the near hash right here. Kick is no good. He shanks it and pulls it to the left. So ball over on downs. The defense hold. That drive does not produce anything. A nine-play drive for the Hornets. They come with no points. And, Al, that was almost a five-minute drive. It was. That resulted in nothing as well. Coming on the field, the Dothan high offense. The Wolves run a single wing offense, which is heavy on deception. Quarterback Sam Broadway or one of two featured backs to Marion Peterson or A.J. Alexander could receive the snap. The offense averages 9.10 yards per carry. When they do throw, look for wide out Jalen Corbett to make the grab. He averages 13 yards per reception. Dothan is plus nine in turnover ratio this season. A quick handoff right there. As we just said, who may know who gets the ball? That's going to be Peterson with the first carry of the game, the leading rusher for the Dothan offensive coordinator, Justin Jones. And, again, I mentioned the eye discipline that these linebackers must exhibit for Baker, Clinton Hurst, Dylan Hudson, Quintarius Robinson, and Jalen Morris must make sure they don't follow the eye candy, need some big push from up front out of defensive coordinators Eric Scott's front three as well. Peterson checks out of the ball game. Second down coming up for the Wolves. Broadway is attempting to pass. Going deep, pass incomplete, intended for Jaden Barnes. Barnes checked in when Peterson checked out. Third down coming up here for Dalton High. And what you do is you look for the run, run, run. You can guarantee another pass is going to be happening here if they're able to establish offensive rhythm. Good job here of the Baker defense creating a third down and seven yards to go. That's not really where Dalton's offense is comfortable, but you mentioned at the beginning of the show you're averaging nine yards per carry. So right here you can get a first down off of one carry. Hand off behind the back to Peterson. He's going to pick up the first down. Great play call. Corbett actually with that carry. First down for the Dalton Wolves. Watch this Statue of Liberty play. I don't know if we're able to bring up this replay or not, but great trickeration. And that's why I mentioned you must be disciplined with your eye can. Looked like he was going to throw it. He went ahead and pitched it up and handed it off. And because of it, positive yardage. That's what I'm talking about for Baker. They must get off the field on third down, and Dothan continues to sustain their drive. First to 10 for the Wolves. Ball at the 33-yard line. And off up the middle, about a three-yard gain for the Wolves as they continue to drive. As you can see, that ground and pound headed your way on the carry. Peterson once again. And 
And when you look at the strong side of that line, it is to the left side behind Myquan Williams and Aiden Jackson. That's where they have had success running this football early, second and seven for the Wolves. Bartaway attempts to pass, going deep, overthrows his receiver. Going to set up another third down for Dothan coming up there, pass intended for D.J. Jones. Al, when you were talking with me earlier today on my radio show, you were talking about the number of pass attempts right. versus completions that Baker has and Josh Flowers has, has completed more passes than Dothan has receiving. Corrected. He has completed more passes than they have actually attempted to, mm. Corey. Hand off behind all of that motion in the single wing, and Dothan ties up A.J. Alexander right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, the Baker defense takes a stand right there, Corey. Jalen Morris, 5'11", 155-pound junior. His 16th solo tackle already has one sack on the season, but a fourth down and seven yards to go for Dothan. You must be aware of any type of fake by Dothan. And again, eye candy you can't fall for. You have to know where the ball is at all times. Wesley Farmer back to punt for the Wolves. He's an all-state soccer player. Does the punting and kicking. Nice punt right there by former Jaden Robinson being pushed back. And that's what we call flipping the field, Corey Pins Baker at their own 12-yard line. Great job of flipping the field, and it really could have possibly been a touchback had he not gone ahead and fielded it off of that first hop. Now let's see off of that nine-play drive that Baker's offense came with. They got within the red zone area and really ran out of real estate as far as the number of downs. The field goal was no good, but you can't have another nine-play drive without putting six or seven, but you still have plenty of room now to stretch the field. If you're going to single cover Bryce Kane, it's going to be a matchup you don't want to see. You better put a safety over the top to help him out because he's going to blow by you. Beckham goes into motion. Right up the middle goes Josh Flowers as he gets the Hornets out of the hole, picks up the first down, and the chain gang is on the move for Baker. Well, I will say this. You look at that nice little quarterback design draw. Could have been a holding there against Baker. The referees didn't see it, didn't call it, and because of it, Josh was able to give his team a little bit more real estate to run by. But look at this one-on-one -on -one matchup. The corner is playing close to 10 to 12 yards off of Bryce Kane, which right. gives him a nice soft cushion because of his speed. But single matchup, I'm looking for that at the bottom of the screen for Josh to recognize that. Beckham just to the left. They hand it off to Rod Taylor. Beckham does some blocking as Taylor falls just past the 25-yard line up to the 26. And what it is here, you know it's second down and eight. You can take your shot here, or you can have Bryce having to come back to the football to respect the speed that number five does have for the Baker Hornets. And you do look at a situation at second and eight out and having the whole field and the whole playbook to work with. You want to make sure, though, that whatever you call, you're having an opportunity to get positive yards with no penalties. Flowers with the keeper once again, does a juke move, comes to the near side, outside of the numbers, pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And that's why he is the Hornets' leading rusher on the season. He can do it through the air and do it with his legs. Check him out on the replay. Dual threat quarterback. That's a design quarterback draw. And as long as he's not taking hits, you can continue to run him all night long. It's when he starts taking those licks that you start getting worried if you're Steve Norman. Just under three minutes to play here in the first quarter. No heat timeouts happening tonight, Corey. We wouldn't need them anyway. A beautiful night for football here in Westmobile at Clem Richardson Stadium. Matter of fact, Clem Richardson and Daniel Bumpers and some other coaches honored tonight before the ball game going into the Baker Legend Club 
Low screen set up for K.J. Beckham. He does work past the midfield stripe into Wolves territory once again are the Hornets. A Sim White, the 5'10", 165-pound junior safety with a touchdown saving tackle there because he was going to be off to the races. But it is another positive yardage situation for Baker right at midfield now approximately the 49-yard line of the Dothan Wolves. And again, that playbook being wide open for Chase Calcagney. This Baker offense averaging 43.8 points per game. First to 10 at the 49 of Dothan. They hand off to Taylor. He's going to be tackled for a loss. Man, that's a big loss, about a five or six yarder right there. Dothan all on top of Taylor. The first time we've really seen a tremendous tackle for loss. We've seen a two yard or a no gain, but Gabe Smith, the outside linebacker, 6'1", 185 pound junior, makes his 13th solo tackle. Great job now. Josh Flowers doesn't have to force this here again. When you do look at the matchups that are available Bryce Kane at the top of your screen, a one-on-one -on -one matchup to where the corner is only giving him five yards. If Josh wants to throw it to him, he can all night long. Second and 15. Flowers going to keep it, try to get back some of that yardage. He does and more as he gets up to the 44-yard line just in front of us atop the press box here at Clem Richardson Stadium. Kind of gets him out of the hole, Corey, about third and short, maybe third and five coming up here. You do have an injury on the play, one of the offensive linemen for the Baker Hornets down, and that's something you definitely don't want to see in this situation if you are Baker. Looks like Jordan Emerson may be on the ground. And he's a young man that can play left guard, center, or right guard. Right. He's Mr. Versatility for Chase Calcag. We'll take an injury timeout and be back with more. You're watching the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Did you know that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students? Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-age children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. Just wanted to give you an update. Emerson still down on the field. Medical personnel headed out to tend to him. We'll be back after this short break, and we'll be back with more action for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Keith Blackwood, your Mobile County District Attorney. I want to remind you about the truancy laws. Five unexcused absences requires you to attend the Early Warning Truancy Program. Failure to attend the Early Warning Truancy Program can cause you to appear before a judge in circuit court. We need you to stay in school. This is a serious law, and it needs to be taken very seriously. I wish you and your family a safe, happy, and successful school year. 
There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. Do you feel alone, overwhelmed, or helpless? There's hope, there's hope. Call or text 988. You don't have to face your crisis alone. If you need a safe space to talk with a trusted adult for support, reach out to your school counselor. Do you need help to make it through everyday struggles? Do you need someone to talk to? Call or text 988. Your social emotional wellness is worth it. Remember, there's hope, there's help. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. I'm Tracy Tran, and I'm in the Healthcare and Dental Academy at Theodore High School. In the Dental Academy, I'm working alongside dental professionals getting hands-on training from those already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job makes me want to work even harder because now I know what I want to be. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. To find out more, visit mcpss.com. Yo, I'm on my way to the mall, the Bel Air Mall. And I'm checking out Trey Pays Cafe. Ooh. Trey Pays is so much fun. They got the fanciest snowballs on the planet. Plus a loaded quarter pounder beef fries. Ooh. Trey Pays Cafe. The nachos are slamming and the fries are banging. Don't forget desserts. Deep fried cheesecake bites, deep fried Oreos, and a whole lot more. It's the food that makes you feel good. Trey Pays Cafe inside the Bel Air Mall. Come now and come hungry. Green. Hello, I'm Katrina Frazier. And I'm Deborah Robinson. And we would like to be your next Realtors. As homeowners, we know how confusing it can be searching to find that perfect home that fits your needs and budget. For that reason, it's important to have a reliable partner to represent you and to be there for every step of your home buying process. You'll find the services offered through Berkshire Hathaway, Home Services Cooper & Company Realtors are second to none. So whether you are buying or selling your home, call us today and let our experience work for you. We are back here at Clem Richardson Stadium as medical personnel are attending to Jordan Emerson. Corey, you and I were discussing it's better to be safe than sorry in a situation like this. Uh, the young man's parents and family are on the field as well, so they're getting him secured. We'll be back to play shortly. We just wanted to give you an update on the situation right here with Jordan Emerson. So we'll be back after this during this injury timeout. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. We're back here at Clem Richardson Stadium. We thank you for your patience, but we had to let medical personnel attend to the young man, Jordan Emerson, as best we could, Corey. Absolutely. The starting right guard, 5'8", 258-pound junior, gave two thumbs up to the crowd, letting everybody know that he did have movement in his arms. Right. So a precautionary tail, and Baker will go ahead and win this game for their right guard, Jordan Emerson taken to the hospital for precautionary measures. Third and a long five coming up here for the Hornets. As we're about to resume play, Emerson replaced by Brandon Lewis on the field.
Flowers back to throw, completes the pass. That's going to be a first down for the Hornets as he hooks up with Auburn commit Bryce Kane. And you can see why the combination there. Look, if you're going to play off of him, he's going to be able to come back to the football. Josh with a great two, three-step drop, getting rid of the football immediately. But you have to give Bryce Kane a cushion because if you don't, with 4-3 speed, you might as well go ahead and make that house call real quick. And they're, they're going to have to double him because you're not going to be able to single coverage Bryce Kane in his speed. Pressure on Flowers. He escapes but falls down, takes a loss of about three yards. It'll bring up about second and 13 coming up here for the Hornets. He tried to escape. Yeah, it's going to be now a five-yard loss on the play, and Josh tried to maintain that balance but couldn't do it, and we'll have one more play here before the end of the first quarter. And what you've seen is Baker sustain this their second drive here Nine play drive came up empty here. They're trying to go ahead and capitalize on this second series. Second and 15 from the 39. Fake the toss, set up the little screen to KJ Beckham. He's trying to weave his way out of trouble. He'll get credit for about a one yard pickup. That's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. And a very interesting first quarter. Baker got the ball twice, no score. Dothan got the ball once, no score. So we are notched at zeros as the clock's going to tick down as Flowers and the Hornets come to the sideline. Second quarter action headed your way. Plus, we'll give you a look at first quarter stats coming up in this top 10 matchup. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, I uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County public school system is excellent. For me and my child, I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. Got to thank Firehouse Subs for being one of our sponsors tonight. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. So visit our friend Neil Patel at the Greelight Road Firehouse Subs location. Also, we got to thank BSN Sports, where you can get team apparel and equipment from baseball to cross country and all sports in between. BSN Sports, it's the heart of the game. Visit them online at bsnsports.com. Got to thank them for being sponsors of the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Corey, you just called it. There it is. Baker pretty much controlling the first quarter, 66 yards on the ground. That's quite a surprise, only 14 rushing yards for the Wolves. Well, it's a series where this Baker defense has stepped up to the occasion, but this is the 10th play of this particular second series for the Baker Hornets. The last was a nine play drive that stalled out after a missed field goal. So Josh Flowers and the Hornets want to keep this drive alive, producing points. Third down, little trickeration as Rod Taylor gets a hold of it. Little hook and lateral call by Chase Cal Cagney. Won't be enough for the first down, but a nice play call right there by the Hornets. Well, what you're able to do is gain back some of those yards that were missed. Now you're in a third down and five yards to go. And that's a design pitch play back to Roderick Taylor and looking to catch the defense slipping, but kind of ran out of real estate on that far sideline because if you're able to do that at the hash, then you're able to have much more real estate to run to. And we're going to have a timeout that's going to be called by the Baker Hornets. Steve Norman uses his second timeout, so we'll take a break as well. Early here in the second quarter, we're still notched at zeros. that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students. Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. 
Did you know Mobile County Public Schools has nine magnet schools with programs emphasizing math and science, technology, fine arts, and international baccalaureate? The application period for magnet schools opens on October 6th. If you would like to apply, visit mcpss.com slash magnet schools for more information and check mcpss.com or each school's Facebook page for the dates and times of open houses scheduled at each magnet school over the next few weeks. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn for a quick injury update. What you got, Kim? I was able to check on Jordan Emerson, and they said he was just dealing with some neck pain and discomfort. No numbness, thankfully, but anytime there's a neck injury, they always like to take them in, give them a look, and give them the all clear, make sure that there's nothing serious going on. But he was in good spirits, and so we are hopefully looking forward to him being back in full health and back on the field next week. Great information right there, Kim. We do want to make a correction. I inadvertently called Jordan Emerson as 54. That was 64. Tay Adams. We've got some confirmation on that, Corey. So it was actually the num he was laying on the ground, and the numbers were so close. And uh, Tay Adams plays uh, right tackle. Emerson plays right guard. He's actually in the game. So that young man injured is Tay Adams. We want to get that correction out there. Pass from Flowers trying to connect with K.J. Beckham, overthrows him. That was fourth down, so it'll be ball over on downs. Baker took their shot there, Corey. What you're looking at is another stall drive, and that one consists of 12 plays that comes up empty for Baker. So you're looking at the number of amount of plays run, 20 to close to six for the Dothan Wolves. And in this situation, if you're Baker, you've had a chance to let your offense stay on the field longer than you have. So we'll see here if Dothan in the single wing offense again, you must read your keys. And that's something that defensive coordinator Coach Scott has stressed. And that's one way you keep the single wing offense off of the field by time of possession with that Baker Hornet offense. Waterway with the carry up the middle, picks up a couple. They'll give him credit for about two or three. So we'll call it second and seven coming up here for the Wolves. Clinton Hurst, 5'11", 153-pound senior, shooting from his outside linebacker position, making a huge stop for Baker, bringing up second down and six yards to go for Dothan. And again, the push up front is what's critical. Whistles on the play. Offsides called against Baker, so that's going to be a five yard pickup for the Wolves. Gary Beasley, our white hat tonight, backed up by Chris Benton, Terry Connolly, Willie Gaston, John Hicks, and Mike Rembert on the crew with the call tonight. And what you're doing now, you're making it easy for Dothan to pick up a first down right here. Their average offensive line is right at 300 pounds, just pushing forward. This is ideal down in distance situations. Little okay, carry line. right there. Another flag on the play, Corey, after that carry by Tamarian Peterson. Second down. So the Wolves going backwards on a 10-yard penalty on holding. After this play, we'll try to get up that Baker defense, let you know who they're working with on their side of the ball. Officials about to walk it off here. Going to push Dothan back to, let's see what he put this at, Corey, that's close a, to the 30. That's a tough down and distant situation now when you're looking at Dothan having a second down and 11 instead of having a first down. So they're going to battle here with the running game. Closer to the 34, direct snap to Alexander, and he gets it all back. That's close to the first down stick right there. That Baker 
defense, the Hornets play a 3-4 defense. Mike Lambecker, Quintarius Robertson, Sam Linebacker, Dylan Hudson, they'll have their hands full tonight, as you can see, trying to tackle the Wolves out of this single wing. Up front, the D-line is a junior offensive, junior defensive end, Tristan Knight. He's a play disruptor with eight tackles for loss. In the secondary, look for Rover Jawan Spriggs to be all over the field. The Hornets defensive line averages a speedy but light 191 pounds. First and 10 for Dothan. Broadway with the keeper picks up a couple. We're going to see that continuously tonight, Corey. And you can look for McQuan Williams, the 6'4", 315-pound junior, and Aiden Jackson, the 6'4", 300-pound sophomore, to line up on the same side of the football. And where they're lined up is normally the strength of where this offense wants to go. But when you have guards and tackles that are pulling, it's important that the linebackers are able to shoot those gaps and make sure that they have great eye discipline in knowing where the ball carrier is. Hardaway with the pass, his first completed pass tonight. Oh, and look at the Wolves moving into Hornets territory up to the 30 with the reception. Jalen Corbett and Dothan High on the move. And that's Corbett with a big time catch. The six foot, 160 pound senior makes his 13th reception of the season for the Dothan Wolves. And really, when you want to look at it, Al, yards after catch are very impressive. And Dothan has received more passing yards than they have rushing yards thus far in this first half of action. First time they've gotten this deep into Hornets territory. But Gary Beasley talking with Jed Kennedy at the sidelines. Play clock hasn't started yet. Or he's talking with one of the assistant coaches. The chains are tied up over there on the far sideline. Oh, it's the chain game. That's yes, what's sir. going on, Corey. I was wondering. I see uh, my buddy Willie Gaston over there with him as well. Yes, sir. And now the chains can move. As we can get on the play, this ball spotted at the 29-yard line of Baker. And for those listening, that Willie Gaston is the same one that played on the 1992 National Championship team for the Alabama Crimson Tide. A former defensive back there now still in football through officiating. First to 10 from the 29. Dalton on the move once again. Peterson tackle picks up about two as Baker swung him out wide going east and west. He couldn't get north and south, Corey. What an outstanding tackle by Donovan Hudson, the 5'2", 153-pound junior from his free safety position, makes his 29th solo tackle of the season. If he doesn't make that tackle, that's six points easily for the Dothan Wolves. One-yard pickup on the run by Peterson. Peterson hands it off to Alexander. Alexander rolling. Gets the first down into the red zone. Goes the Dothan High Wolves trying to get on the board. And that's a great job here of being patient in the hole, waiting for your offensive lineman to set it up. And the difference here for Dothan and Baker, Baker, if they're not able to stop Dothan right here, Dothan has been able to produce points in the red zone if they're able to score on this drive. First and 10 from the 17. Dothan can pick up a first down without scoring on this series right here. Once again, back to Alexander. He's driven down, written down, written down close to the 16, maybe 17 yard line. And Jawan Springs, 5'10", 173 pound junior Rover is on for the tackle for the Hornets. No game no on the play. Second and 10, Al, and again, you must remain disciplined Dothan wants to come away with six points, and the difference is red zone productivity. Can Dothan produce in this red zone area? I thought my eyes were deceiving me, but it is no gain on the play. This time it goes back to Broadway, and Broadway tackled for a loss. His forward progress stopped at the 25. Sacked by Jalen 
Morris from his wheel linebacker position, his second sack of the season, 5'11", 155-pound junior, did not fall for the banana in the tailpipe because <laughs> he had his eyes zeroed in to doing his assignment, shot the gap, did a wonderful job with containment, and brings up a tremendous third and close to 18 yards to go for the Dothan Wolves. Now, again, you must make sure that you wrap up and tackle if you're Baker, and you want to make sure that you go ahead and don't commit any penalties that'll get Dothan a break. The Wolves have only completed one pass tonight. Brought away back to pass. Pressure is on him. Rolls to his left, and he is sacked back-to-back -back sacks by the Hornets, and that was huge right there. Tremendous textbook tackling by Quintarius Robinson. Six foot, 165 pound, 17 solo tackles is going to add a sack to his resume here, and that's a great job, a great stop to where you were in the red zone area, and now when you're looking at right at 520 remaining here in the second quarter of action, no points by either team. A 10-play drive stalls out for Dothan. That equals the same stalled out drive for Baker. Farmer back to punt. No one back to receive, but a flag comes on the play. Looks like a possible false start against the Wolves. And there's the call by Gary Beasley. Going to push him back five more. Now, I will say this, Al. A week ago, we had a two <laughs> Don't say it, zero Don't say it. game at the half. <laughs> right now, in what we expected to be an explosive offensive show tonight, we've not come away with that yet. So it'll be interesting to see here Baker on their third drive can get it in gear. Let's see if Farmer can pin it. Put a little backspin on it. Dothan's going to down it at the four-yard line. Corey, you're right about it. We even talked about it on the air with you today. We were expecting somewhat of a blowout as Dothan averages 50.6 points on offense and Baker averages 43.8 on offense. Coming up at halftime, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge with Kimberly Dunn looking to get a winner tonight. So make sure you stick around for that. Plus, we'll be listening to the sounds of the Baker Hornet Band at halftime as well as we're still notched at zeros. I am quite surprised, Corey, oh, with shocked. 433 remaining but in the right half. right here, man, you go one-on-one -on -one with Bryce, and he's going to the house some 97 yards if you're going to put single coverage on number five at the top of your screen. Flowers, it's a straight go route as he's trying to go to Bryce Kane. You called it, Corey LeBounty, outside the numbers. Incomplete. Yeah, that's where you want to go. You take that touchdown attempt there out of your own end zone. Great defense, and it's step for step in that situation. Now what you want to do is find a way to get yourselves in the flats or find a way to get a draw going here because now that you've kind of essentially taken your shot on first down, second down you want to make sure that you get half of what you lost or did not gain on first. And on that particular play, it was threaded fasteners, impact players going up against each other. Kevin Young Dury and Bryce Kane going head to head. Play clock under five seconds. Baker gets it off. Rod Taylor's got some room, stretches it out to the numbers, going near the Dothan sideline, trying to turn the corner. But he gets Baker out of the hole. First down for the Hornets. Great job by Chase Cal Cagney changing that play up on second down because you took your shot on first down, and it was great patience being shown by Roderick Taylor in that situation to where he was just pushing his offensive lineman in front of him, picks up a fresh set of downs for the Baker Hornets. The clock continues to run right at four minutes remaining here in the second quarter of action. And again, when you're looking at an 80-yard field to deal with, the speed of the Baker Hornets on the perimeter is going to be evident here momentarily. 16-yard pickup by Taylor on that carry. Flowers fakes the pitch, dives to the hole, picks up one or two. Second down coming up here for the Hornets. Design pitch, and Josh was able to read the defense, decided not to pitch the football, and decided to keep it. But he does pick up positive yardage. And with this big frame, 6'2", 208 pounds, the future Mississippi State Bulldog, where he is verbally committed to, continues to command this offense on the field. Kane at the top of the screen, guarded by T.K. Knight. 
Flowers just going to keep this on the quarterback draw. The line to gain is the 30, and he has enough to pick it up. They're going to mark him at the 31, maybe we'll call it the 32-yard line. Flowers knew exactly where he was on the field. He knew that he had the first down as soon as he looked down on the ground. Nice hip <laughs> arm by Flowers, and he's able to get yards after contact. Now, again, on first down, you're still able to go ahead and take your shot. And what you do have is you have Jaden Robinson, who's a very efficient wide receiver also, or you can go ahead and get Roger Taylor or Kevin Beckham Jr. out of the backfield available also. And we're going to have a penalty flag that's going to stop things. I think that one's going to go against the Hornets, probably. Legal motion, but no false start. Gary Beasley on the call, push Baker back five yards. And I know Kevin Beckham Jr., the 5'11", 152-pound senior, he has tremendous speed also. That one-on-one -on -one coverage that he has on the bottom of the screen with the defender, we mentioned Dury being that corner. You know, you're looking at the top of the screen, one-on-one -on -one coverage for sure. Taylor goes out into motion. They set up a little sidearm screen. Couldn't get it to Beckham. You were just talking about him, Corey. Yeah. Incomplete. Third down coming up here for the Hornets. And Beckham has 28 receptions for almost 500 yards on the season and two touchdowns. So he is a weapon not only running the football but also receiving the football. So now when you're in a situation here to where you are at close to second and right at 16, we'll call it, you're still having a lot of green grass in front of you to deal with flowers. Can read, RPO it do what he likes to do. Second and long for Baker. Flowers rolls to his right, decides to keep it, has plenty of room. Up the middle, needs a block. Gets into Wolves territory. Nice salvage of a play right there by Josh Flowers. And our threaded faster impact player of the game for the Dothan defense. Number seven, Dury. He's one-on-one -on -one right here. Josh has a chance to make a miss, can't do so, and Josh is going to look at film and be mad at himself <laughs> that he wasn't able to stiff on that corner and take it to a house call, but first and 10 for Baker. 36-yard line of the Wolves. Fake the handoff, little play action. Passes high, but not high enough. K.J. Beckham climbs the ladder and pulls it in. A big strike on that slant right there for the Hornets. We mentioned the great hands by Kevin Be Beckham Jr. You find your playmakers ways to get the football. Two, five, eight, nine, all playmakers for offensive coordinator Chase Calcagney. Now, again, they're in the red zone area. We saw them earlier be in the red zone area, and that play sheet shrinks. So now you're going to have to find a way to get Roger Taylor or Joshua Flowers with the quarterback keeper. We've seen Flowers run the ball very effectively in the red zone area throughout his career. He has eight rushing touchdowns. He can make that nine. First and goal from the seven. Flowers with the keeper. Seven-yard score for the Mississippi State commit. Our first score of the ball game at 114 left in the first half. No-brainer what you do, especially the way you stalled out in the red zone the first drive that you had this drive right here you make it rushing touchdown number nine for mr flowers smelling like roses in the end zone munson on for the extra point he's 20 of 21 on the season make that 21 of 22 Baker strikes first, but it took almost two quarters to head that way. We'll be back with more. Do you feel alone, overwhelmed, or helpless? There's hope. There's hope. Call or text 988. You don't have to face your crisis alone. If you need a safe space to talk with a trusted adult for support, reach out to your school counselor. Do you need help to make it through everyday struggles? Do you need someone to talk to? Call or text 988. Your social emotional wellness is worth it. Remember, there's hope, there's help. We are back at Clem Richardson Stadium. Baker strikes first tonight. Took us almost a halftime, Corey. You were close to jinxing us when you brought up that uh, two nothing lead last week by Spanish Ford over Theodore. 
Munson puts it deep, taking it about the 14-yard line. Nice return right there by the Wolves. Take a look at the scoring drive from the Hornets right there. Eight plays, 96 yards, took two minutes and 20 seconds off the clock. Corey, you were right. They had to drive it all the way down, and they really started right there at the 20 after that 16-yard pickup by Rod Flower, Flower. I mean, Rod Taylor, they had to put it into gear. Plenty of green grass when you're operating from your own four. Good return, blocking the back, return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Operate from your own four-yard line. You have plenty of room to open up that play sheet. And with the playmakers that Baker has on offense, boy, oh, boy, you're glad to see them go ahead and find six points on the board, the extra point being good. And now we'll see if defensive coordinator Eric Scott's Baker Hornet defense can stand up and get a nice stop before the half, get some momentum going as they will have the lead at halftime. Dothan starting this drive for their own 13-yard line, brought away back to pass. Good coverage right there by the Hornets. Basically, I'm going to call that a coverage sack by Baker. Broadway couldn't connect with anyone. Alton Edwards, the nose tackle, 5'11", 210-pound junior, says, I'm going to welcome myself to the party. And Dothan's really not a hurry-up offense. They have timeouts at their disposal, but backed up against their own end zone. You don't want to burn those timeouts to give Baker's explosive offense an opportunity to drive back down the field. Third sack of the night by the Hornets. No gain on the play. Handoff right there to Peterson. He picks up a couple. The clock continues to tick. And I think Jed Kennedy is just going to let it tick on out, Corey, as we get ready to hit halftime here. And that's what's going to happen. Jed Kennedy and the Wolves are just going to take it to the locker room. And we just had our first score as we near the end of the first half. Unbelievable. Yeah, when you have empty red zone drives for both teams, we've yeah. seen Baker score on one out of three red zone opportunities. And Dothan has not come up with a red zone scoring chance yet with any points on the board. Let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. She's with Steve Norman. Coach Norman, it took almost two full quarters to get that score on right, the board. Right. Do you feel like this game has turned out how you kind of anticipated it? A little bit, you know. I think we're moving the ball well on them in spots. I think we got to capitalize on situations and get some points on the board. We can't go to get drive, 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 get all the way down there and come out with nothing on the scoreboard. So seven points is not going to be enough against this team by no means. Yeah, so what adjustments are you going to go in now and try to make with your team? Yeah, well, the big thing about it, too, I think defense is playing well. I think they may make some adjustments, try to get the ball vertical and get down the field some. So we got to make sure we, we maintain that. Also, offensively, we got to be able to throw the ball better. We're not executing as well as enough in the passing game as I'd like to. So. Once we get that fixed, I think we'll be all right. All right, thank you, Coach. I'll let you get with your team. All right, thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break and come back and bring you the Baker Hornets marching band. It's halftime. Baker's on top, 7-0. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. I have known since I was in fourth grade that I was going to be a teacher. I really just truly enjoy coming to work every day and working with different sets of kids and just watching them grow and learn. I couldn't see myself doing anything other than teaching children, being a part of children's lives, being able to inspire them in a way that some people just aren't able to do. And to know that every day is a new day, a new opportunity to make a difference in the child's life means everything to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. 
just the overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. Do you feel alone, overwhelmed, or helpless? There's hope. There's hope. Call or text 988. You don't have to face your crisis alone. If you need a safe space to talk with a trusted adult for support, reach out to your school counselor. Do you need help to make it through everyday struggles? Do you need someone to talk to? Call or text 988. Your social emotional wellness is worth it. Remember, there's hope, there's help. It is halftime here for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Time to take it down to the field and enjoy the entertainment from the Baker Marching Band.
School marching band will take a break and be back. Halftime still going on for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. What's the matter, baby? You're not feeling good? School-age children are at a higher risk of getting and spreading germs and viruses. To help protect the spread, students are encouraged to stay home when sick. Parents, it's important for your child to remain at home at least 24 hours after they no longer have a fever of 100 degrees or higher without the use of medications. Please help us maintain a healthy learning environment. We are back at Clem Richardson Stadium, and it is now time for the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn. 
All right, I have a wonderful guest with us here tonight, ready for our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Can you tell us your name and where you go to school? Cadence. Where do you go to school? Nangar Davis Elementary. Now, who are you here rooting for tonight? Baker. Baker, okay. Well, we'll see if they'll come out with a winner. Are you ready for our question tonight? Yes. Okay, here it is. What do you call a person who studies the weather? And it's multiple choice. It's either A, a zoologist, B, an anthropologist, C, an archaeologist, or D, a meteorologist. Do you think you know what the answer is? Okay, what do you think it is? Meteorologist. A meteorologist. Great job. You have just won our Chick-fil-A prize pack that has tons of goodies from Chick-fil-A as well as Mobile County Public Schools. Congratulations. Wave goodbye every to everyone. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Great job, Cadence. Mobile County Public Schools is offering a new leadership course this year for its middle school students. It's the LOC program or the Leadership Officers Training Corps program. Here is more on that program as to how it will be used throughout the district and the benefits it will offer Mobile County students. Hello, my name is Andy Bennett. I am the owner and president of Interactive Learning and the co-creator of the Chisel 365 Leadership Curriculum and Technology. For the last 20 years, I've been working in the schools and with our nation's JROTC programs. I was asked to give a real quick uh, interview and answer a few questions about our Chisel 365 curriculum. So first question was, why did we see a need for this program? Kind of back to the name here, character, health and fitness, interactive service and leadership. That's what we were trying to deliver. We found that um, high school was too late. It was too late to uh, wait for high school to, to get these students in this program that's, that could change the course of their life, give them identity, give them a hope for a, a bright future. So we needed to create that earlier on and, and catch those kids, get them with healthy habits and um, communicating better, just becoming better citizens and better leaders. Detachment, attention. The Cadet Creed. The Cadet Creed. I am Leadership and Character Development Corps Cadet. I always The way it works, the way it's supposed to work, is a program we, we invite the little kids to, to come in and, and, and be a part of the program. Because we figure like this, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of middle school kids come in and they either join band or they go to PE because they want to be athletes. But you still have those kids who, who, who don't want to be in band and they know they're not going to be athletes. So we, we, we recruit those kids so we can put them in a leadership program because we know leadership is something that they can use for the rest of their lives. And those kids that we bring in who are non-athletes, non-athletes, are the ones who stay in the program all the way through. You know, even, even though in the seventh grade they can become athletes, a lot of them come back once, once their season is over. So the, the great thing is that we capture them, we t teach them how to team build, we have fun activities for them, and they, they want to stay. Well, the first thing it does, it, it offers them a place in the school. It is a program built for any and every student. Every student can find their place in LOTC. Every student will evolve into something greater. They do this program. It brings good out of them, brings the confidence out of them, skills out of them. It's a program that's, that's built for all students. When I was in the program, I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was just another fun program to be in, but the longer I stood in it, I really realized how much it highlighted leadership skills, and that really made me want to stay. So in life, it made me reach out to more people. It made me connect with others that I wouldn't normally talk to. It made me build relationships with instructors, and they have helped me throughout school. I could not see any reason that you would not have an LOTC in every middle school. If you have football, if you have band, if you have the arts, why would you not offer this leadership program um, in alignment with those other groups? When you search for leadership programs, we've looked high and low. There, there's not a lot out there for something that I have seen with the return on investment. Um, I, I don't know what it even costs 
to start up an LOTC program because we've always had it, but I know that we wouldn't do without it. And just recently, we're looking at budget cuts and no one's looking to cut out LOTC, but it's the foundation of our culture. And we have a culture of high expectations where young men are developed into real world leaders. And that's what LOTC has provided for us. It, uh, it really helps kiddos with um, just leadership opportunities. Um, we are also an international baccalaureate school, and so we use that as what we call a design course. And so kiddos learned, uh, learn a lot of different qualities in, um, within the program, you know, in terms of leadership and how they can become better people, um, better citizens. Um, and so all our sixth grade students take LOTC, um, seventh grade is an elective and eighth grade is an elective as well. This program absolutely works. It absolutely works. Um, we started off, like I said, we started off with, uh, with one. When I got here, they put, they put three more in once I got here. And now we're up to 15. And more schools all over Texas. We got, we got 20, 20 programs in Fort Worth. We got 29 in Dallas. We got 15 up in Houston. We got another five. Uh, uh, on the outskirts of San Antonio. So we got about 85 programs in Texas alone. Absolutely it works. As, as the rate is growing, we'll be bigger than JRTC in the next five years. Mobile County Public Schools, the place that has it all. We have 90 schools that include rural, urban, and suburban schools of various sizes. We are also home to Alabama's first public school. We welcome you to come join our winning team. Our district is led by the 2020 Superintendent of the Year, Mr. Kressel D. Threadgill. Our teachers are leaders in their profession who are afforded numerous professional development opportunities. Our principals are collaborators and encouragers. Our schools are leading in innovation and instruction. And most importantly, our students who are learning today, leading tomorrow, are simply the best. If you want to live in a historically rich city near beautiful beaches with superb southern hospitality, we invite you to come teach with the best. Team MCPSS. It's your time, it's your season, and you are made for more. More confidence, more style, and more bling. The Genuine Bling is here to deliver you more bling and more fashion. With new styles added daily, you can shop anytime and look fabulous. Join me, Charmaine Watson, on the $5 Frenzy every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. It's cute. It's fabulous. It's fashionable. It's $5. It's paparazzi. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program. The teachers are phenomenal. The principal, I uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County Public School System is excellent. For me and my child, I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. Halftime about to conclude here at Clem Richardson Stadium. A top 10 matchup. Corey, it's been quite interesting. Let's take a look at the stats through two quarters. We only have seven points, but we do have some numbers, especially on the hometown Hornets there. Well, you're looking at 28 total plays being run by the Baker Hornets as opposed to 19 for Dothan. And the rushing yardage is exactly what's critical in the key right now because on my checklist, Baker had to stop the run. They've done a good job. 31 yards only, wow. 22 passing, 53 total yards, no turnovers. It's been a clean play game. And the biggest delay that we had was due to that medical situation that I know that you wanted to go ahead and let everyone know and get that clarification so everyone could know exactly what's going on. Yeah, the young man was Tay Adams. We ended 
inadvertently said Jordan Emerson, but it was Tay Adams who was taken off of the field. So hopefully we'll get some more information about him later on. Corey, let's revisit your checklist because this ball game has not turned out the way we thought it was going to turn out. Baker leading in rushing yardage right now. Stop the run, stop the run, and stop the run. That's what Baker had to do. That's what they've done so far. Penalty poise, they've done a great job of not being flagged a lot and sustaining drives. Also, a lot of bogged down in the red zone, and I know Kimberly Dunn is going to bring us the head coach of the Dothan Wolves. Coach Kennedy, we've seen a great competition from both of these teams so far tonight. What did you say to your team to continue to motivate them to finish this competition? Well, I don't think we played very well. Um, they did a great job keeping our offense off the field. We had two drives off first half. Got to get off the field on third down. We had a second and long, gave up a long run. We can't convert a third down, so we better play better. It's going to be a long second half for us. You said that you really felt like this game was going to be a learning experience for you and your team to see where you really stand when it comes to future playoff potential. What do you feel like adjustments you need to make to get to that level? Well, we didn't play like a playoff team right there. Um, we got to play better. Um, but uh, we'll come on and fight in the second half. I know that. All right, Coach. Best of luck. Got to respect the honesty of Jed Kennedy right there, Corey, as he laid it out. Let's revisit your checklist. I think Dothan was up next, correct? Absolutely. Dothan in the second half, they have to rev up the run game. And what does that mean? That means if they're going to rev up the run game, that means that Baker is not stopping them. They have to contain and pressure the pocket on Josh Flowers. Have not really been able to stop him from running the football and limiting turnovers. They've done a tremendous job of that, not putting it on the turf yet. So we'll see if Baker can come out here in the second half with the offensive and defensive intensity that it had in the first half. Take a look at our spotlight player of tonight. It is quarterback Josh Flowers for Baker. Look at the numbers that he has put up so far tonight. There he is walking on the sideline, so we'll get that information. There it is right there, right there, 6 for 81 through the air, 85 yards, 11 carries for 101 yards. That's the reason why he is the Hornets' leading rusher committed to Mississippi State. Kickoff taken right near the two-yard line as the Wolves bring it up to the 25. Great return by Jalen Corbett. Hit was leveled right there at the 25. First and 10 coming up here for Dalton. LeGermany Treywick, 5'4", 166-pound junior on special teams, laying the lumber there on the Dothan returner. And now we'll see if this Dothan Wolves offense, led by offensive coordinator Justin Jones, can get it in gear. Again, averaging almost 50 points a game with the big goose egg. So, again, it's about putting four quarters together and erasing what was done in the first half and being able to capitalize in the red zone area. Alexander with the carry. It went through Peterson. No gain on the play, second and 10 coming up for the Wolves. Quintarius Robinson again from his Mike linebacker position does a great job. And when the guard and tackles pull, that's a signal. It's a key to what's going on from your linebacker position to go ahead and fill that gap in that hole and they're doing a wonderful job here. The second level of defense for Eric Scott's defense. Carry right there once again by the Wolves. Peterson, another carry. Picks up a couple. Nice game right there to bring up third and about four here for Dalton. Getting into that second level of defense. And now let's see here if Baker is going to bend and not break because Dalton cannot afford to go three and out. Third and three. The Hornet Hooligans make some noise here in West Mobile. As you call it, Corey, money down here for the Wolves. Very big third down. Back to Peterson, up the hole he goes. He's going to be close, but I think he's going to be about a half a yard short. Fourth down, no, he's one yard short. Fourth and one coming up here for Dothan. I expect him to go for it. Jed Kennedy, the head coach of the Dothan Wolves, is going to decide probably here to roll the dice. I know I would behind a big 300-pound offensive line. And all you need, not necessarily a quarterback keeper, but just to trust that offensive line to get that burst off of the snap of the football. That line averages 294 pounds. There's some big beef up there. Back to Peterson they go. 
A wall gets to him. Let's see if it's forward progress. Yes, he picks it up. That's a two-yard gain. First down for the Wolves. Well, what it does, it does give you a fresh set of downs, and Dothan's not going to hit you with anything but speed. They don't go tempo. They just want to get a hat on a hat, and especially if they can get that offensive line pulling to that second and third level of this Baker defense, that's how they're able to average 50 points per game when they get out to that second level of defense. So far, the linebackers have done a great job of Baker staying home. First and 10 from the 36. Flag on the play. Thrown here on the near side. Gary Beasley signals offsides against Baker, so that's a free five for Dothan High. That's the second time that Baker has lined off offsides, and that's something that I know will drive defensive coordinator Eric Scott crazy because you're sitting right on top of the football. It's one thing <laughs> right. to have encroachment and uh, go ahead and anticipate the snap count. It's another thing to line up offsides when you know exactly where the football is marked for play. A.J. Alexander up the middle he goes near the 49, possibly right at the midfield stripe. That's another first down for Dothan as they are on the move. And we saw them have a 10-play drive earlier that produced no points on the board, continues to grind the clock, but the two-headed running back monster, uh, Peterson and Alexander, on display for Dothan on this drive. First 10 from the midfield stripe. Back to Alexander they go. He picks up two. Second and eight coming up here for Dalton High. Kudos to this front three. Cameron Archie, Alton Edwards, and Tristan Knight doing a great job up front. And Hurst, Hudson, Robinson, and Morris filling those gaps for defensive coordinator Eric Scott. Giving up 25.8 points per game. But really, when you look at it, haven't given up 100 yards here in the contest. Pitching a shutout right now. Baker on top, 7-0. Alexander, he could go. Alexander on the move into the end zone. I think they're going to mark him out right at the one-yard line, pushed out of bounds, touchdown saving tackle by Baker. And it's just a numbers game to the right side of that offensive line. You look at having more outflanking the defense there. You look at the burst and the speed of A.J. Alexander, the 5'8", 165-pound sophomore, has now close to 500 yards rushing in seven touchdowns so far. He's trying to make it number eight, get the ball to number one and let him finish this drive. Peterson with the carry, one yard score, and Dothan is on the board to Marion Peterson picks up his ninth touchdown of the season. And that was a great answer for this offense coming out of the half. And when you look at the push up front, A.J. Alexander, he does go ahead and sustain a huge play that leads to a touchdown for this Dothan offense. Farmer setting up for the extra point. He is perfect on the season, 20 for 20. Kick is up, and it is good. Dothan evens the score. We're notched at seven. We'll be back with more. Did you know that missing two days of school per month has a negative effect on student achievement and that chronic absenteeism is negatively impacting one out of every 10 Alabama students. Studies show students who are chronically absent are more likely to drop out of school. For every one day your child is absent from school, it takes three days for them to catch up. So if I am not sick, make sure I'm at school because missing school means missing out. We are back live at Clem Richardson Stadium. Dothan has tied this game back up.
return from Baker taken by Rod Taylor. Take a look at the scoring drive right there by the Wolves. They put together quite a drive there, Corey. No passes on that drive. It was all runs. Eight plays, 75 yards. They burned off four minutes. It was capped on a one-yard touchdown run by Tamarian Peterson, but set up by that 49-yard gain by A.J. Alexander. And that's what offensive coordinator Justin Jones and head coach Kennedy have been waiting to see out of this explosive Dothan offense and great job of getting the push they needed. Now let's see if Josh Flowers and Baker can answer. Flowers with the carry up the middle, he goes. Picks up about four on the play. No turnover so far tonight. We've had a few turnover on downs, but Dota made a statement right there, Corey. As they came out of the half, they put that drive together and got on the board, so the shutout's over. And what you have to do is you just have to answer a score with a score. We talked to Steve Norman before the game, and we did expect a high-scoring game. Shocked that it was 7-0 to at the half. Right. But when you average 50 points per game, you're going to get yours sooner or later. But now Baker and Josh Flowers just have to take over with the decision-making here and trusting the arm strength and the legs of Flowers. Flowers back to throw. He's got Kane wide open. Kane to the house. Hits Pater. Touchdown for the Hornets. And just like that, Baker answers back. Bryce Kane shows the blazing speed. The young Auburn Tiger verbal commit, he soars into the end zone, having his 10th receiving touchdown of the season. Folks, he runs a four foot, a four three, and you can see he has track speed as Flowers <laughs> just lays it out there beautifully for him, and he's able to have six. Munson on for the extra point. And it goes through, and Baker answers just that quick. Look at this replay. Clean wow. pocket, clean pocket. Great job by the offensive line. And look, folks, I've been saying the speed has been there, and that route has been there really all game long because you're not going to be able to stay in front of Bryce Kane. I don't care what kind of defender you have out there because he just has that extra gear, that extra burst that you normally don't see only in his second year of varsity football. And you can see why this has been a tremendous addition to Steve Norman and Chase Calcagney, who begged Bryce's mother to let him play. That's a <laughs> wonderful story. As Bryce's mom said, you can go ahead and play, son. I'll let you. I don't like that contact. But there's not much contact to be had when you run a 4-3 speed-wise. Everybody's trying to catch you, and they're not able to do so. Big score right there by Baker. Three men back to receive for the Wolves. Ball is bobbled by Corbett. He picks it up. Gets up to about the 18 or 19 yard line. Take a look at that quick scoring drive. We knew it was two plays. 66 yards in total, a 62 yard touchdown reception from Josh Flowers to Bryce Kane, only burned 54 seconds off of the clock. Wow. 10 seconds of that offense was Bryce Kane running after the catch. So you look at him and his burst of speed, Flowers just continues to deliver. This is his 12th throwing touchdown of the season, has only thrown one interception, and he just continues to show the versatility. Don't be surprised if you see him get early playing time at Mississippi State. <laughs> That's why he's our spotlight player tonight. Broadway steps back. They set up a little trickeration wide open. And he's going to take that to the house for the Wolves. Jaden Barnes, one play. They strike from the 19-yard line. Look at Dalton answer back, Corey. Here comes the shootout we talked about this afternoon. Jaden Barnes, the 5'10", 170-pound junior, makes his seventh reception, his third receiving touchdown 
And once again, the same thing we saw them do against Prattville. The nice rollout, the throwback, and that's what happens when you don't have great discipline with your eyes. You get caught looking into the backfield, and you get burned. And now we have ourselves back-to-back -back scores. Let the shootout proceed. Fifth touchdown through the air for Sam Broadaway. Extra point is up, and it is good. We're tied 14 to 14. Man, we were just kind of trudging along there, Corey, and all of a sudden, bam, here's a score, bam, here's a score, bam, here's a score. And that's what we expected to see early in the first quarter of action. But what we saw was the offensive teams bogged down in the red zone area. Now, Al, what you're seeing here is no red zone opportunities. You're seeing one yeah. and two play drives as that scoring drive took 24 seconds. It probably took him a good 20 seconds <laughs> to go ahead and have his yards after catch. But again, Al, what it goes to show is the importance of knowing what your keys are and having great eye discipline. That's something Steve Norman talked to us about before the ball game. Staying on your keys, stay in your lane. Dothan sucked them right in. Nice booming kick right there from Farmer into the end zone. Get ready to mark your calendar. Headed your way into first quarter is coming up next Friday, October the 6th. So teacher work day is Monday, October the 9th. No school for the kids on October the 9th. So mark your calendars, parents. Kids are out October the 9th and next Friday, the end of the first quarter. So, Cor, if you got a test you need to make up or a paper you got due, Labounty, uh, you might have some eligibility left in the system. You got about five days to get in, Corey. Well, at least there's no more EQTs. <laughs> oh, there you that, go. That, at least no more EQTs. First to 10 for the Hornets from the 20. Hand off to Rod Taylor. Keeps those legs chugging. Picks up about two or three on the carry. Now, what you did see on the last drive is flowers to Kane. And it's a bulldog to a tiger future in the SEC, if you're going to single man coverage, Bryce Kane or Kevin Beckham Jr., they're going to go ahead, they're going to burn you. So you have to have help. You have to pick your poison at some point in time. And what you will see is if you don't want to help a safety over the top with the wide receiver, you're going to be in trouble. Taylor brought down for a loss. Going back, back to back run plays called up by Chase Cal Cagney. Third down and about nine here for the Hornets. Well, if you're Josh Flowers, what you do here is you trust him to go ahead and roll out of this pocket. We've seen quarterback design runs here on third and long earlier by the Hornets, but you take what the defense gives you if you're Josh Flowers. Flowers has time, airs it out. Trying to go to Kane once again, overthrows him. You can see the arm of Josh Flowers right there as Kane was double covered on that particular route. That's hard to do is to overthrow Kane, but it goes back to what you just mentioned, the arm streak of Josh Flowers. And it's a young man that's a dual threat quarterback. That's a huge stop for this Dothan defense led by co-defensive coordinators, Rich Bettesum and Pat Cerrone. And we mentioned this Dothan defense giving up 14.1 points per game. They've reached that average tonight. Right. So we'll see if Baker here will have an opportunity to bow up on defense and redeem themselves. First punt from Munson end over end. And it is muffed, muffed by Jaden Barnes. Ball is still alive as Dothan falls on it on the 25. Barnes muffed that point muffed that punt. Baker had a chance to get on top of it, Corey. Here's the replay. And what you cannot do is advance a muff. So if Baker would have recovered, you wouldn't have been able to scoop and score. And uh, they were not able to pounce on top of that football. And because they weren't, a couple of opportunities there, but the blue jerseys weren't able to be Johnny on the spot. And now this high-powered Dothan offense will go ahead and go back to this trusted run game. They went with the okie doke and had success right. with the passing game, but you have to stay disciplined here if you're Baker. 
First to 10 for Dothan from their own 25. Carry right there by Tamarian Peterson. He picks up his four or five like he normally does, maybe about seven on that one. So we'll call it second and three coming up here for the Wolves. Michael Johnson with the stop here for this Baker defense. And you're looking at how many yards they're getting on first down now. It goes from averaging nine yards per carry to picking it back up here in the third quarter of action. Alexander with the carry, just choosing the hole to go through. Falls forward enough for the first down. He's going to pick it up and the chains are going to move. And what you're starting to see here is the wear down offensive line play of this Dothan Wolves offense. And that's what they want to do. They want to ground and pound. And I mentioned on my checklist that that's something that Baker has to do. They have to stop the run, put them in second and long and third and long situations. First to 10. Up the middle goes Peterson. There's that one-two punch we talked about. Peterson, Alexander, Peterson, Alexander. Moves the sticks about five yards, so we'll call it second and five here coming up for the Wolves. And one thing when you do decide to run the football, it does make the game go much faster than you would see if you're able to throw it. And when they did throw it, it was for a touchdown. So that time elapsed off the clock very quickly also. But now when you're in a second and close to eight yards to go, Baker has to try to pin him back. Peterson on the carry once again. Picks up about two or three, third and short coming up. Dothan continues to stay in front of the sticks here in the second half. Not the type of momentum they produced in the first half as Baker was on top seven and nothing, but it almost took two quarters to get that score. And now what you're seeing here is you have to make sure that you don't get fooled run, run pass. We saw Baker get burned moments ago, getting caught looking in the backfield. You have to make sure that you stay home and you read your keys. Third and short, the Hooligans getting a bit antsy. I think that's going to be enough to get the first down. Alexander fell just past the line to gain. And the chain gang's on the move. First down for Dothan High. Dawson Kelly comes up from his corner position and makes that stop, the 5'11", 118-pound senior, but not before the Wolves are able to get the ball right to the 47-yard line, their own 47-yard line. And once again, you must, from your linebacker position, go ahead and get in those gaps with those guards and tackles pulling to disrupt the flow of this running offense. Back to Alexander they go. He busts open another one, one man to beat. As he has tackled near the five yard line, the second big run tonight we've seen by A.J. Alexander. And Al, it's the same exact run, the same exact play. They have exactly what they want. They have numbers on the right side with the guards and tackles pulling. And all you have to do is get past the line of scrimmage and turn on the burners if you're A.J. Alexander. Momentum in the red zone for the Wolves. First and goal from the six-yard line of Baker. And the offense really clicking here for Dothan. Peterson straight up the middle he goes, fighting for yards as he gets near the three or the two. Let's see where they spot him at. Now remember, it was 7-0 to zero at halftime, and my, oh, my, had the Dothan Wolves come out here in the third quarter with all offensive cylinders firing. Ball at the two-yard line, second and goal coming up. Direct snap to Peterson, goes through the B gap. He's right at the goal line, but not enough didn't sneak the, the nose of that pigskin into the end zone. So third and goal, I think this may be at the one foot line, Corey. It is, and that will be the last play of the quarter. They don't have to snap it here if they don't want to. So either they like this end or they don't. If they like this end, they'll go ahead and run one more play. About a three second differential between the play clock and the game clock. 
Right up the middle, they're pushing Broadway with the tush push like the Philadelphia Eagles. And that's a touchdown for Sam Broadway and the Dothan Wolves faithful, those who made that three and three hour and 45 minute drive down, they're excited for their Wolves. Well, what you've seen now is your program scored 20 unanswered points. I say unanswered, yeah, it was answered with Josh Flowers with that big throw to Kane, but they had a donut here at halftime, and now you're seeing trying to put 21 points on the board in one quarter. It does show the explosiveness here of Dothan's offense. Farmer's extra point is up and good. 4.8 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Let's go ahead and put up our game of the week brain buster question. No heat timeouts tonight, so we haven't even had a time, chance to tease the question. So here's the question for tonight. Baker is off to its best start, 5-0 since 1973. Name the only other season when the Hornets started off at 5-0. Corey, one of your favorites, multiple choice. We'll let you think about that, and we'll come back with that answer. Sometime coming up here in the fourth quarter. And now it's going to be imperative for Baker to answer here offensively. They can't go three and out. They have to sustain a drive here to get Dothan back on their heels because they need momentum. And the Hornet hooligans and the Hornet faithful give them something to be excited about offensively. And you were able to do so with the mismatch with Kane right. and the mismatch of Beckham Jr. And we haven't seen a lot of rushing by Roderick Taylor either here in the second half. So it'll be interesting to see how Chase Calcagney decides to orchestrate this drive to where, to me, when you give Flowers and Calcagney plenty of room to operate with, they do their best work dissecting the field. Flowers back to throw. Throws it deep. Almost picked off by the Wolves, intended for K.J. Beckham. That's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn down on the sidelines. What's going on, Kim? So far, we've seen in a very exciting game from both of these teams. And just going back to what the coaches talked about before this game even began, they knew that this was going to be a very tough game. Both coaches actually praised the other team and said that this was a team that was going to potentially prepare them for playoff potential that was going to let them see where they stood what kind of potential they had to make it to the playoffs and to let them know what they needed to work on once playoffs were in sight so even though this is a non-region game both of these teams know what is on the line that it's a learning game and that they need to be prepared and come out with a victory to see where they really stand Thank you, Kimberly. And Dothan High definitely came out prepared in the second half, Corey. They turned it around. They have put up 21 points. As you said, not really unanswered, but it's been like a hit right in the mouth. Let's take a look at the stats through three quarters, and they have totally flipped the rushing yardage around at halftime. Baker was all in control, but look at there, 163 on the ground, 103 through the air. Now they're back in this game. That's why they're leading 21 to 14. Well, when you're able to catch Baker off guard with that huge gashing passing yard touchdown, that's what evened the odds a little bit. Now Baker just has to settle down here in the fourth quarter, know that they have the home crowd behind them, just execute their offense without committing their first turnover of the game. No turnovers, turnovers by both teams. Give it to Rod Taylor. You just talked about that. A flag comes out generally in the area of holding. Looks like this one may be coming back for the Hornets. Yeah, that's something that you don't like to see, especially a positive yardage being gained with the first time that you've been able to see Roderick Taylor be active since the first quarter. Now, will that continue to be successful? Yes, it will. That will come back and be against the Hornets. Now, you're behind schedule down and distance-wise. Looks like it's going to be from the spot. So it's going to be close to second and maybe 22. About 22, they're calling it a spot foul. See if we can pick out the hole right there. So they're placing it at the 10. So the ball's right at the 10, so it's second and 20. If it's holding it, 
No, that's correct. It is second down because yes. they ran one play before the end of the third quarter. So second and 20 coming up. But a chop block, not a hole, but a chop block call. Our producer, Quentin Howard, in our ear. Second and 20 for the Hornets, backed up against their own end zone. Flowers gets it out. Bryce Kane eaten up by the turf monster, Corey. No one was around him. Something you don't see a lot of slipping and falling, especially on a dry night. Natural like turf here, too. And there's no dew or humidity that sits down and makes it slippery. So it's just one of those to where the turf monster, the artificial, nope, it wasn't the artificial turf monster. It was the natural grass that came up and was able to trip him up, but he still has that one-on-one -on -one coverage with the safety shading over so they can't go over the top. So those intermediate routes and the running game is wide open, but you're behind the sticks, which makes it hard. See what Chase Calcagney dials up for the Hornets. Flower right up the middle, ran into a few of the Wolves. They cut that hole down real quick. They stayed in their lane, kept their keys right on him, Corey. So Flowers tackled fourth and long coming up and Blaine Munson coming out for his second punt of the night for the Hornets. Well, it's been a 7A slugfest right here for Dothan and Baker, two opponents that are in a non-region matchup, 7A Region 1 versus 7A Region 2. And it's very possible that you mentioned earlier in the broadcast a playoff possibilities between this team or MGM are very possible here. So we'll see if Baker is able to bow up on defense again. Great punt to the 50. Corbett takes it right at the midfield stripe, past the 40, past the 30, turns on the Jets, fumbles, recovers it. Wow. I believe Corbett yes. recovered his own fumble. Wow, how lucky can you be? That makes it extremely tough. You're talking about bouncing the right way. Great punt all the way to the 50-yard line and nice nifty shiftiness there by Corbett running the numbers and thought he was going to go to the house. Has it poked away. He's able to pick up the football himself. Now they're in the red zone area off a tremendous punt return. Baker has to have a stop. Dothan trying to put the nail in the coffin. Looks like it's at the seven-yard line. Up the middle goes Peterson with the carry. Boy, he is a workhorse, part of that one-two running package. That's why they're the top two rushers in Class 7A in the state of Alabama. Six foot, 190 pounds senior is the leading rusher right now. And I know when you have that penalty flag, that tough run will come back due to a whole unsportsmanlike conduct penalty call. That's the big 15. They're going to march it off. I know that will not make Jed Kennedy happy at all. So that pushes the Wolves back to the 17 yard line. So it is second and goal from the 17. So they are not short of run back, running back. A.J. Alexander can get it done as well. Alexander fakes it, keeps it. They're trying to rip it out. Baker's trying that can open a drill. You talk about often, Corey, but he holds on to the big skin. Ball security. We have not seen a turnover besides that, a turnover on downs and the ball hasn't hit the turf with the exception of that return by Corbett that had the nice friendly bounce right back into his chest. Huge third down and goal to go now for the Dothan Wolves. This can be the difference maker in this game. To me, this is four down territory Absolutely. for head coach Jed Kennedy and his offensive coordinator, Justin Jones. No gain on that play. Alexander in motion, brought away back to throw. Hornets all over him, brought away, sacked at the 25-yard line. Big defensive stand right there by the Baker Hornets. Huge defensive stands by the Baker Hornets. Cameron Archie 
from his defensive tackle position, 5'11", 158 pound senior, may have knocked the Dothan offense out of field goal range. Now you're at fourth and goal to go, and the ball is right at the 26 yard line. They are going to attempt this 43 yard field goal. High snap. Farmer's kick is up. It is just short. Just short. If he had about maybe five more yards, he probably could have got it in. Baker, big offensive, I'm sorry, big defensive stop right there. Ball over on downs. 21-14 is our score. And this is what it is when you're in the playoffs score. Yeah, two seven A heavyweights going at it. Dothan next week will be at Central of Phoenix City in a region contest. Baker will be at Alma Bryant. So back in to region one play and region two play as these are two seven A teams in a non-region game going toe to toe and you're going to give Josh Flowers an opportunity here to operate his offense and to show, look, the last drive stalled. This one will not fail. Flowers is going to put Baker on his back. First to 10 from the 20, hand off to Rod Taylor, followed behind those pulling guards as he picks up about six or seven on the carry. Second missed field goal tonight. One missed early in the first quarter by Baker. That one missed by Dothan. And I love the fact that you go to running early and get positive yardage, something we haven't seen with the exception of quarterback design runs since the first quarter. And you let this offensive line get a push off the football and give Josh Flowers room to operate. Second and three. Flowers going to keep it. Runs right up the middle. Should be enough for the first down. And the chains are moving, and Baker's moving with 7.43 remaining here and the clock ticking in the ball game. Hornets down seven. Well, we're due for a fantastic finish here in West Mobile at Clem Richardson Stadium as Mr. Clem Richardson is in attendance. And I tell you, one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top of your screen, folks, can spell trouble. Flowers with the quick out to K.J. Beckham. A bit too high for the young man. Stops the clock. Second and 10 coming up here for the Hornets. And that's one Beckham Jr. wants to put behind him. I mean, on first down, you had an opportunity to get positive yardage and just was not able to squeeze the pigskin. And now you're at second and 10, but have no fear. Flowers is here. <laughs> Hornets in a pistol formation. Fake the handoff. Flowers rolls out, throws back across his body. Pass intercepted by the Wolves. Big interception right there. Gabe Smith lays out folks. Wow. You won't see a better interception from an outside linebacker. On the wheel route, they try to hook up and are not able to hook up with Roderick Taylor coming out of the backfield. 6'1", 185-pound junior lays out and elevates for that interception for the Wolves. Only Flowers' second interception of the season, but that is just a great defensive play by Gabe Smith giving it up. Now when you have this quick change of possession, we'll see if Baker is able to respond on this quick change of possession. Ball placed at the 45-yard line of Dothan. Alexander tries to go up the gut, picks up maybe one or two. Clock continues to run. Baker needing a stop here very badly. Had some momentum there, Corey, but lost it on that pick. And Quintarius Robinson continues from his Mike linebacker position to be a factor defensively. And he stayed at home second and eight is exactly what Baker would like to dial up to keep the down and distance in their favor. Broadway checks back in for the Wolves. Passing, completes it to Corbett. Corbett knocked out of bounds at about the 35-yard line of Baker. That's a first down. They're moving the sticks. 
and what offensive coordinator Justin Jones and head coach Jed Kennedy do in this single wing offense is find mismatches. And they're able to find that mismatch right there to Corbett because we saw them pass happy in the first quarter, right. run heavy in the third and fourth quarter, and are able to utilize that pass. But reading your keys here for Baker. Alexander with the carry. Hornets trying to strip it out of there. He picks up about two. Baker with their full complement of timeouts as we approach the six minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Top 10 matchup, number seven Dothan, number nine Baker. This is an out of region contest, but Corey, it almost has a playoff atmosphere feel tonight with the Wolves coming to town. Absolutely, it's a playoff atmosphere. 7A showdown here, and Baker, again, at second and eight defensively, have to come away with the stop. Peterson with the run, breaks it outside to the numbers, cuts it back in, smart by Peterson to stay in bounds. He could have ran out, but he knows by staying in bounds, that'll keep the clock going after they reset the chain. What you're starting to see is this offensive line get to the second level and mm -hmm. absolutely lay out linebackers. When you have 295 pounds coming at you full steam ahead, you have no choice but to get pancake. And now the line of scrimmage is starting to be dominated by this big Dothan offensive line. Dothan back in the red zone once again, first and 10 from the 16. They can get to the six yard line and pick up another first down. 5-17 remains here. Back to Alexander, same play. He falls just past the 15 yard line. Well, you have plenty of time here to come away with a huge stop. And what they saw on the last drive was an unsportsmanlike penalty call. And we will have an injury timeout as one of Baker players is down on the ground in some pain and Al, I know that right here with exactly five minutes remaining, what you're looking to do and accomplish is Baker to have some type of penalty by Dothan and right. or some type of line of scrimmage tackle for loss. Let's get up the brain buster question and reveal the answer. All right, Corey, here we go. Baker is off to his best start, 5-0 since 1973. Named the only other season when the Hornets started off at 5-0. I'm either going to go B or C here. And, um, you know, we'll just we'll just throw it out there. I'm just going to say B. Corey goes with B, 1971. Get Miss Diane to hit the magic button. Corey, you are correct. In 1971, the Hornets went 6-3-1. and one, And that kind of started off a five-year run, probably one of the greatest in Hornets history in a five-year span from 71 to 1975. The Hornets won, Corey, you're sitting down, 34 ball games. Wow. That was only replicated from 2012 to 2016 under Jack French and Danny Smith. They put up a 34 win total during a five-year period. And when you do look at being able to make the type of history that Steve Norman and this Baker Hornet squad has been able to accomplish, kudos for them and their start, but never want to forget your history of your program. Take an injury timeout right here. We'll be back. Five minutes remain. Dothan trying to score. Hey, Alexa, tell me about Mobile County Public Schools. With 53,000 students in 90 schools, Mobile County Public Schools equips and empowers college and career-ready graduates. Several MCPSS schools are ranked among Alabama's top 10. Yearly, graduating students earned about $110 million in college scholarships and 10,000 career credentials. MCPSS is learning today, leading tomorrow. Does that answer your question? the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Enjoy more subs, save more lives. A portion of subs purchased at Firehouse will go to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation. Visit our friend Neil Patel at the Greelight Road Firehouse Subs location. Also, we want to thank BSN Sports. If you're looking for team apparel from basketball to volleyball, all sports in between, visit them online, bsnsports.com. They are the heart of the game, and we appreciate them coming through with our sponsorship tonight. 
shot of the Baker Hornets cheerleaders right there as they're trying to rile up the hooligans. Baker needing a defensive stop right here. Clock is ticking. We're under five minutes. Second and eight. Ball sitting at the 14-yard line. Baker still has three timeouts. Dothan still has three timeouts. Broadway letting that play clock and game clock run down. A.J. Alexander on the end. He's going to take it in to the house for the score as the Wolves score once again. They have come storming back. It's been the two-headed monster of A.J. Alexander and Tamarian Peterson as they just overload the left side and let his speed bounce to the outside. And when you're able to get a hat on a hat, we do have another Baker Hornet down. And sure do. that's going to be a critical injury to Alton Edwards, the big nose tackle down for the Baker Hornets on the play. And I do know that even though you do have 420 remaining, you mentioned that Baker having its full complement of timeouts, Josh Flowers and the bunch have to come out and be explosive once again on offense. We'll take a break and be right back. Do you feel alone, overwhelmed, or helpless? There's hope, there's hope. Call or text 988. You don't have to face your crisis alone. If you need a safe space to talk with a trusted adult for support, reach out to your school counselor. Do you need help to make it through everyday struggles? Do you need someone to talk to? Call or text 988. Your social emotional wellness is worth it. Remember, there's hope, there's help. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future, and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. Yo, I'm on my way to the mall, the Bel Air Mall. And I'm checking out Trey Pays Cafe. Hey, Trey Pays is so much fun. They got the fanciest snowballs on the planet. Plus a loaded quarter pounder beef fry. Hey, Trey Pays Cafe. The nachos are slamming and the fries are banging. Don't forget desserts. Deep fried cheesecake bites, deep fried Oreos, and a whole lot more. It's the food that makes you feel good. Trey Pays Cafe inside the Bel Air Mall. Come now and come hungry. We are back here at Clem Richardson Stadium. Shout out to Ron Morgan on the clock here at Clem Richardson Stadium, one of the veteran officials. He makes sure he's slow on the clock to go and he doesn't like to push up six or seven. He, likes, he doesn't like to mash and reset that score. So he makes sure that <laughs> just it Corey. is officially a score. So it is 28 to 14. We kept wondering the scoreboard had not changed at all. But there's a shot right there. It was on the sideline getting attention, getting attention from the trainer. Well, now what you have to do is we've seen one play explosiveness for the Dothan Wolves. We've seen two plays explosiveness for the Baker Hornets. And if you're Baker, go ahead and try to eat up those big yardage because that was a great defensive linebacker play on this last interception. And it's not something you see. And that was a nice six play drive there for Dothan being able to go ahead and elapse almost three minutes off of that clock. But Baker has to have an answer right here offensively. And again, and Flowers we trust in making the right decisions because he has plenty of explosive offensive weapons to choose from. Baker takes it from the five. Up the middle comes Rod Taylor down to the sideline. Nice return by Taylor up to about the 35, 36 yard line as Baker's gonna take over. Down 14 points with four minutes to play. Corey, I witnessed it last night. Thompson was down 10 points with about 90 seconds to play, and they tried to mount a comeback. 
come back and lost it on the uh, a last second field goal that was wide. So by no means is the ball game over. No, I mean, you just have the explosiveness of Bryce Kane, and you also look at his offensive weapons on top of Kevin Beckham Jr. and Roger Taylor. You just, Flowers just can't force the ball because he's only thrown two interceptions, and you have over 11 touchdowns passing. So if you have to beat him with your feet, beat him with your feet. Across the middle to Kane, incomplete. Does stop the clock for the Hornets. 4.06 remaining here in the contest. So if you want to look at a positive side of that incomplete pass, it does stop the clock with 4.06 remaining here in the fourth quarter of action. And you're just starting to see the defense making sure they're not going to get beat over the top on that deep ball. Flowers back to throw again. Way across to K.J. Beckham, but his forward progress is only going to yield two yards. Nice way to wrap up and tackle right there by the Wolves. Great job of this Dothan defense, making sure that nothing gets behind them. We'll give up the five to seven intermediate yards. Now you're looking at a third and a long eight yards to go. Four down territory already for Baker. Whistles on the field. Love the timeout by Dothan. So a timeout call by Dothan right there at 338. Jay Kennedy wants to talk about it third and long, so we'll take a break as well. Timeout on the field. Dothan on top, 28-14. A teacher is one of the biggest investors in a community. They impact the lives of those we value the most. Teachers share knowledge which helps shape and mold our future leaders. Teachers show direction and help build a sense of purpose. Are you ready to make a change? For more information on teaching opportunities, teacher incentives, or to apply with the Mobile County Public Schools, log on to www.mcpss.com. We are back here at Clem Richardson Stadium. Point is down 14 points, 338 remaining in the ball game. Third and long coming up about a third and eight play. Chase Cal Cagney's got to dial one up right here. It's definitely two down territory for the Hornets. Flowers back to throw pressure on him. Pass incomplete juggled by K.J. Beckham. Another drop pass by the young fella. Fourth down coming up for Baker. Kiavion Dury, four interceptions on the season. Comes in with two pass breakups. Does a great job, the 5'11", 180-pound senior in defense. And fourth and eight for Baker. And you definitely have to have a conversion. Wouldn't be surprised if they do decide to call a timeout. I'm not surprised at the timeout right here called by Steve Norman and the Baker Hornets. 3.32 remaining in the contest. We'll take a break. 30 seconds. We'll meet you on the other side. We're going to stay right here. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn on the sideline. She has an injury player update for us. I was able to check in on our player that came off the field limping. He, it, he did sustain a knee injury. They did have to wrap it up and ice it, and they said he will probably go and see a doctor tomorrow. They aren't sure if he will be back to play next week, but they know for sure he won't be back the rest of this game. Thank you, Kimberly. Talking about Alton Edwards, defensive player for nose guard for the Hornets. They have Bryant next week. They'll go back into region play. So this game does not count against Baker or Dothan. Whoever wins or lose, it doesn't count in region because this is an out-of-region contest. So both of these teams will still be uh, sitting at, I believe, region play, Baker undefeated, and Dothan has one loss in the region. So what you're looking at now is for Baker, you want to keep your crowd in tool with 332 remaining. You have two timeouts remaining if you're not able to convert, but you're opening up the playbook here to where you have one-on-one -on -one coverage, but you can't go over the top. Some type of wheel route or seven-yard route and stretch will be good. Beckham goes into motion. Pressure on Flowers. Flowers is sacked at the 25-yard line, and that's going to be ball over on downs. 
and you can pretty much say that may be a wrap for the Hornets tonight, the way Dothan runs their offense. A lot of rushing. Take a look at 7A Region 1 standings. We were just talking about it. Baker and MGM undefeated in region play. So if Baker takes the loss tonight, does not affect the region record, but overall they would drop to 5-1. and one. And everyone pretty much playing out of region tonight here in 7A Region 1 as well. Huge stop by Ezekiel Scott, the 5'11", 210-pound junior from his defensive end position, is able to get that pressure on Josh Flowers, who was not able to step up into the pocket, not able to see a passing lane, and was not able to run either. Now Baker, two timeouts remaining, will have to get stops early on first down to stop the clock. Peterson on the run, note given to me by statistician Matt Moore Baker for tonight. They've run 45 plays with 15 first downs. Dothan has run 47 plays with 12 first downs. But Corey, two or three of those plays were big plays for the Wolves. That ate up a lot of yards. Well, let's look at this. Let's go back to only 19 plays of offense for the Dothan Wolves in the first half. Right. And Big now difference. they're right at close to 50 pushing in the game. So that's let you know that they've controlled the clock here in the second half in time of possession and have worn down at this Baker Hornet defensive line. Second down and five coming up here for the Wolves. A.J. Alexander with the carry, tripped up. Knee goes down right near the 26-yard line. He did stretch it out, but his knee went down. Jalen Morris on the stop, and you can look for Baker after this. They have to have a stop right here in order right. to call a timeout because you're not calling the timeout now because you're banking on your defense to get you a stop here on second down. And Dothan, they're going to milk as much of this play clock as possible before they come to the line of scrimmage and snap the football. But you have to have a stop here on third down, money down for Baker. We'll be under two minutes when they snap this ball. And right at the one second mark of the play clock, Jay Kennedy calls a timeout. We'll take a break and be back. 154 remains in the ball game. County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goals. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. To find out all the latest news on what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter, Mobile County Public Schools. We are learning today, leading tomorrow. Make sure you follow us on all those social media sites, especially on YouTube and Facebook, because we're on there live right now, Corey. Absolutely. Third down right here, money down. You have to cash in if you're a baker. A.J. Alexander with the carry picks up the first down and more as he stretches out to the four or three yard line. That single wing offense really took over here in the second half for the Wolves. Just the number of dominant plays and you look at number one being about his business and coming into this, Peterson led the team in rushing. Alexander says, look, I'm gonna try to go ahead and catch you from a yardage standpoint. <laughs> And he's really not got credit for the touchdowns, but sure has a brunt over 100 yards rushing for sure. Up the middle, the Wolves continue to go. Peterson with the run right there. That one-two punch has been consistent, especially in the second half. Well, I tell you this, Dothan's offense comes in averaging 50.6. They want to get 35, so that average does not drop. And, you know, it's sometimes up to take a knee here because you've got the two-touchdown lead. Right, you right. Punch it in here. What are you doing it for? Style points? I, Just, I don't think Kennedy has to do that. Under 10 seconds on the play clock, they will have to snap it. Peterson into the end zone. Touchdown for the Wolves.
and Dothan has just come back in the second half. That's Peterson's second touchdown tonight. 35 to seven here in the second half from a scoring standpoint. And that's unbelievable when you start looking at the explosiveness of this offense that just was non-existent through the first 24 minutes. Extra point is up and good. Corey, last year's score, Dothan won. The score was 43 to 15. Corey at halftime, it was seven to nothing, Baker. Well, now we're at 35-14. No doubt about it that the Dothan Wolves were able to make the type of adjustments. And Coach Kennedy talked to Kimberly Dunn before the start of the third quarter, says, look, we have to have non-productive situations to where our offense does produce for us in the red zone. And they, they weren't even really in red zone drives, Al, because no, no. you look at just the explosiveness scoring one play, four play, 10 play drives, Man, you just don't see 35 points in a half too often. It's going to get up our career tech education player of the game here in a second after this kickoff by Farmer. 26.7 seconds remaining here in the ball game. This was really the tale of two halves, if you want to call it, the first half. And basically the majority of our scoring occurred here in the second half. Here's kickoff by Farmer. Taken at the five. Beckham slips up, but marked near about the 22-23. Get up our career tech education player of the game. And this guy has definitely done some running tonight. A.J. Alexander, two big runs that somewhat got Dothan back into the ball game in the second half. So we're going to make him our career tech education player of the ball game tonight. One of the reasons why he's part of that one-two punch, being the top two rushers in Class 7A here in the state of Alabama. And it's not easy to make a three-hour and 45-minute drive down here to Mobile, Alabama from Dothan because there is no direct route. There is as none. That's where the basketball regionals used to be held, and we had to have to travel to Dothan. But it's going to make for a nice three-hour and 45-minute drive back home for Coach Kennedy and his cheerleaders and all the fans who made this trip as Baker valiantly fought here. And again, you look at Steve Norman and what he's been able to accomplish off to this 5-0 and start, making history. Right. 50 years worth have been bottled up waiting to explode. But the key is the main thing remains the main thing, which is to become region champion. Correct. And that goal is still in front of you. What you're getting is just a taste of what you'll see in the first and possibly second and third round of the playoffs for Steve Norman and the guys. Good test for the Hornets to book a game like this because you want to up the level of play. You want to up the level of competition because, as you say, Corey, this is what you see when you go into the playoffs. This will be the last year of Region 1 playing Region 2. They're going to swap the regions out starting next year. So one will play four and two will play three. They kind of, as they say, kind of, you know, switch things up a little bit. And here at the end of the game, you see a little testiness I by do. the Dothan Wolves, a little unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Late hit will be called against Dothan as Josh Flowers tried to scramble out of bounds. But overall, when you look at the checklist here, Baker had to stop the run, did that for 24 minutes in the first half. They had to have penalty poise, did that for the first 24 minutes. Sustained drives were able to do that. You flip the script in the second half, Baker was not able to stop the run, was not able to have penalty poise, and did not sustain drives. And you look here for Dothan High, they had to rev up the running game. Well, they definitely revved it up definitely to another the notch, half. put it in the fifth gear here in the second half. Contain and pressure the pocket of Josh Flowers in the second half. They were able to do that and limit turnovers. No turnovers tonight by either one of these squads in regards to valuing the football. So Josh Flowers threw that one interception. That's the only turnover that we have seen, none by the Dothan Wolves. So they checked all the boxes and did what they needed to do in order to win this contest. One thing I found out about Dothan when I was looking at the statistics for their team, Corey, they have no fumbles on the season. And they run the ball a lot, they run it heavy, and they get the win tonight, 35 to 14, in this top 10 matchup. Dothan makes the trip down, and they get that victory, 35 to 14. 
quite a ball game, especially in the second half, Corey LeBound. Well, when you look across the state in the newspaper or AL.com, you're going to be shocked by this score saying 35 to 14, a lot closer than you would have thought. Right. You never thought it would have been a 7 to 0 game going into halftime. And again, kudos to Dothan for finding a way to get it done in the second half, getting it in gear. And when you look at these final stats, Man. very impressive right at that rushing yard average, 229, 122 passing. That's the shocking aspect that I was not expecting to 122 see. 122 yards, I agree. 351 total yards, that one turnover interception that was nice by Gabe Smith. Five penalties for 30 yards, five for 52 for Dothan, and 35 to 14 is our final score in a game that went very fast. But, again, it gives you a taste of what to expect in 7A playoff football. All right, next week we're going to have it for you. We're going back into region play. We're going to go down to BC Rain. Matter of fact, they've got a brand-new stadium, so we'll get to check out the digs next week. Citronelle versus Rain in a 5A Region 1 ball game. For Kimberly Dunn, Corolla Bounty, our statisticians, China Powell and Matt Moore, I'm Al Wheaton thanking you for tuning in for another MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Dothan gets the win.